Today we're going to be dissecting the mouth and abdominal cavity and reproductive organs of the mink. And we're going to start out with the mouth. And the mouth is a lot smaller than the cat, which we used to dissect. And you're going to be using your bone cutters today. Be very careful with the bone cutters. You're going to need eye protection because you will be cutting through teeth and bone. And once you get through the bone, you're going to cut with your scalpel to remove the soft tissue. And so as you angle this in, mine is already cut, so it's going to look a lot easier than it is. But you're going to angle it in so that you are cutting bone, but you're not cutting the soft palate, the tongue, any of the structures you want to identify. And you're going to cut down. It's going to make a pretty bad sound, but just keep going. And then once you get it movable... Then you can go in with your scalpel and cut down on either side, and you're going to want to pull this back until it rests on the mink's chest because you want to have plenty of room to see everything in the oral cavity. So we're going to start out with the hard palate, and you can see the ruga that's on the hard palate. You also have the soft palate, which is soft. That's where the bone ends, and you have soft tissue that composes it. This, of course, is the tongue. This structure sticking up right here is the epiglottis, and the opening directly behind that that has the vocal cords inside of it is the glottis. The opening behind that, if you pull this down, which is why it's so good that it's opened all the way, this is the esophageal opening, which goes to the esophagus and then down to the stomach. So this goes to the stomach. This is where food passes. This is the glottis, which is where air passes and goes to the lungs. So you can see how close they are. But when the mink was swallowed, this covers that opening so that food doesn't go down the wrong path. So we're going to close the mouth up. We're going to do the thoracic cavity in another lab. So there's going to be some structures in this video that you will not see, like the thymus gland or the diaphragm. However, we will be feeling for the diaphragm to know where to cut for the abdomen. So... We're going to put our mink back together as if you were to see him or her when you first open up. And what you're going to do is take your scissors and you're going to pinch up this portion of the abdomen because you want to pull it away from the organs so that you're not cutting any of the internal organs you have to identify. And you're going to make a small hole and you're going to cut with your scissors angled upward. And you're going to cut all the way up to about the bottom of the rib. And then once you get it open, just feel, and you should be able to feel the diaphragm right here, which I can, right above the liver. And that means that I'm in the right spot, and that's where I want to stop. You don't want to cut all the way through the diaphragm. We're going to do this area in another lab. So once you have it cut all the way up here, you're going to cut all the way down to the pubic bone. Be careful if you have a male um, and a female for the bladder underneath here, but for the male because the penis is in this area, the vas deferens are located in this area along with the spermatic cord. They're very superficial, so be careful when you're cutting through. Then you're going to cut this way and this way so it opens like a book, which you see here. And we're going to go through and identify the structures of the internal anatomy of the abdominal cavity. But... Um, the adrenal gland, because see, even I made mistakes, the adrenal gland I accidentally removed when cleaning the fat around the kidney because there is a lot of fat. So, word of caution, be careful. Um, but I'm going to show you the adrenal gland in the male. We're dissecting the female right now, and we'll do the female anatomy at the end of the, re the um, internal structures. And then we'll look at the male reproductive structures as well. So we're going to start up here with the liver, which is really obvious when you first open the mink. And the gallbladder is right here. Then if you move down, you'll see the spleen, which is on his left. And this is the stomach, and the stomach has a greater curvature. It's a backward C. It has a greater curvature here, which is large. That's why it's greater. It has a smaller curvature here because it's, um, it's called the lesser curvature because it's small. Then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut around that greater curvature and you're going to open it. You're going to see some ruga in here as well and empty any contents there are if there's any food. There wasn't any food in my mink's stomach, so that made my job very easy, but you need to remove any of the food content so you can see this ruga very well. So we're going to close it back up. Then you will see this large structure that was probably spread over the intestine when you opened the mink. This is the greater omentum. 
and we're going to fold that back. Do not remove it, just fold it back. Again, here's the spleen. And if we lift this up, we can see the pancreas. This pancreas is dark, sometimes it's a lighter color, but here's the pancreas right here. It starts over here with the spleen and it's gonna go all the way around and weave through the small intestine. You just have to be able to identify the pancreas. Then we have the intestine. We have the small and the large intestine. And the way that I identify the small and the large intestine is by what it's attached to. So if we look over here at the intestine, I'm gonna move the small intestine over and we see the first section that's attached to the stomach, which is right here. It's this first section before it makes that curve. This is the duodenum. Then you can divide this in half and say, well, one half is the jejunum, which is connected to the duodenum. So I would say that this is the jejunum here. The ileum is what is attached to the large intestine. And the mink does not have a cecum. And the large intestine, I find, is not much... Um, different in diameter than the small intestine. So when you look for the large intestine, you have to go a little bit around. And so here's the large intestine here. So the jejunum is what's connected to this section, the duodenum that goes to the stomach. The large intestine is here. And so this section of the small that's connected to the large intestine would be the ileum. You can see the mesentery weaving all through the small intestine. Then from the ileum, we go up, which is the ascending colon, over, which is the transverse colon, and then down, which is the descending colon. The last inch or two is the rectum, and the anus, of course, is the opening to the outside. Then we have the kidney, the adrenal gland, which should be here, and I'll show you in the mail. And we have the ureter, which is what is going to carry urine from the kidney down to the bladder, which you can see here. This is the bladder. And you're gonna use the bladder, you're gonna lift that up and you're gonna find the urethra. You only probably see this portion of it. You're gonna use that as a guide to cut through the pubic symphysis, which I've done here. Be very careful, you're gonna use your scalpel, but you're cutting through cartilage, so, um, be very careful when you do this because you don't want to put so much pressure that you cut through the pubic symphysis and the structures underneath it. But this is the urinary bladder. Then you have the urethra. And the opening to the outside, this area right here is the urogenital sinus. When we go back and flip the bladder back, this is the reproductive anatomy, and this is for the female. You're responsible for the male and the female anatomy. So you'll be comparing your mink's reproductive structures to another's, so you can see both sexes, and you are tested on both sexes. So for the female reproductive system, this is the uterus here. Here's the body of the uterus. Here are the horns of the uterus, which we can see here. Here are the horns of the uterus. And if we move up, here is the ovary and the oviduct, which wraps around it. And this is the body of the uterus again, because the tube that's connected to it, that's behind the bladder and the urethra, the tube behind it is the vagina. And so that's the reproductive structures of the female. But let's look at the male. So I'm gonna slide the male over here. And again, I've opened the male just like I opened the female. I first want to show you the adrenal gland as I promised. I've got a pin right here to hold it in place. This is the adrenal gland. And be careful when you're doing this dissection because the kidney has a lot of fat. This adrenal gland I know is not extremely visible, but it's small and it has kind of a C shape to it. There is a blood vessel that runs through this adrenal gland that you'll need to identify. So make sure that you're saving blood vessels, especially around the kidney as you do this dissection where you can. But this is the adrenal gland near the kidney and it sits pretty close to it near the renal vein. So let's look at the male reproductive structures. Again, we're gonna find the bladder. We're gonna lift it up and we're gonna find the urethra and we're gonna use that again as our guide to cut through the pubic symphysis. And you're going to see an enlarged area 
on the urethra, and this is the prostate gland, the enlarged area. If we pull the urinary bladder down, we can see the vas deferens right here. We can see them right here. And they are going to go through the spermatic cord and come in and wrap around. And I can see part of the vas deferens right here. You can see that right there as well. Then, again, here's the prostate gland. This is the male's penis, and the penis has a bone in it, so it's going to be obvious. Although the first mink that I dissected, the penis was removed. So if that happens to you, you're just unlucky and um, try to find another male in the lab that you can view. But this is the male penis that has a bone in it, so it's very obvious. This is the spermatic cord, and this is why I said to be careful dissecting the male because this is superficial. It's very easy to remove when you're dissecting muscle and removing fat because it's small. But I know I'm in the right area because if I pull on that, you can see that the vas deferens here move, which is what they're wrapped up in. So this is the spermatic cord. Then we have the testy. My testy on this cat, on this mink was already exposed. So that made it easier. If it's not exposed, you'll need to open the scrotum and expose one of the testes completely. And so this is the testy. This is the head of the epididymis. You just have to be able to identify the epididymis, and that's connected to the spermatic cord. So you are responsible for the male and the female, but this is the end of the video for the internal anatomy, the mouth, and the reproductive structures.